Good evening all. Uh, I'm Lalit. Uh, I'm here to present uh, developing scalable PHP apps on AWS. Uh, let me introduce myself firstly. I'm Lalit Nama, uh, working as a system analyst in Renosys Technologies. And uh, I'm really passionate about PHP and uh, I'm working on the PHP since four years. And uh, with the Amazon Web Services, the cloud attracted me. And uh, I have experience uh, uh, of deploying more than 15 applications on AWS cloud. So I'm just exploring that, and Amazon as, uh, is uh, working, uh, deploying new services. So there are a lot of services, and I'm continuously exploring those and taking the benefit of that. So the topic developing scalable PHP apps on AWS. Uh, AWS, you all know, and this this topic is a very big topic. And so I have to uh, summarize in 30 minutes. So I'm just covering only two points, the two services, simple storage service, S3, and uh, SES, email service. So let's see. This is the table of contents. Uh, firstly, I will talk about AWS SDK for PHP and version 3 release and installation of this. And uh, then I will move on S3 and SES services and the best practices to use SES, what problem you can find, and a short demo to deploy a sample PHP application. So moving straight. So first thing, these are the services. I just take a snapshot yesterday. Uh, more than 45 services Amazon already launched. So, but to deploy a PHP application, you do not need all to know. Only uh, the few services you may need, like from uh, server side EC2, you, you use a storage, you use S3, database, you use RDS. So let's see a list, the likely services you generally use to deploy a PHP application. First one is EC2, you know, uh, the server, Elastic Compute Cloud, to host your PHP application. Second is S3, simple storage service to store the user content. Static files like JS, CSS, images, you can store in that. And you have to use S3 to be really scalable, because that time the user content will be in the S3 and you can run multiple web servers. So static content will be delivered from S3 and your application, the PHP core application will reside in EC2. Mm. And the database is your choice, RDS, RDS provide you MySQL, MSSQL, Oracle, so you can use, uh, or either you can choose DynamoDB. Uh, the next service you generally use is SCS, simple email service to send the email from AWS. And another one is the uh, deployment service. Uh, there are major two deployment service, CloudFormation, Elastic Greenstock, so we will talk about that. CloudFront is the next service you may need to use if uh, you are really concerned about the speed of delivering the static contents to your user. So CloudFront is CDN and it can deliver the content fast from nearby uh, region of user if you use that. Uh, the next one is CloudWatch. CloudWatch is the monitoring service of the AWS instances, AWS other services. It gives you a uh, statistic about if you talk about EC2, it can give you statistic of server usage, memory usage at any time. And there are two types of services in CloudWatch, extended and normal. Normal uh, give you the states in five minute period and extended in one minute, every one minute you get the update of your different services. And the last one, identity access management. You can go with the root credential but uh, there are many services, 45 plus services, so you can fine grain your control, uh, the control which you want to give to your user. If you are developing an application, there are many developers, so you can directly give that this person should only access to EC2, this person only S3. So that fine level of uh, permissions you can set using IAM role. So these are the services that likely you use only. The first thing, first uh, SDK, PHP SDK, AWS provide PHP SDK. It is uh, a, a bunch of classes to utilize the AWS services. Like if you want to start EC2 instance, you can uh, use the AWS uh, SDK to start instance. You want to store files in S3, you can use this SDK. So it is the way to interact with the AWS services basically. Although most of the functionality you can directly perform uh, from the console, AWS console, but uh, in the programming 
you need it and majorly you need it for Amazon S3 because whenever you user upload a content like a file a user is uploading you have to store it in S3 so that time it used so firstly the SDK installation uh, you can see there are three types of installation first is composer there is dependency manager so you can just uh, install composer if you not installed and then there's one click uh, one command you can install uh, the dependency of in your project. AWS SDK will download and uh, you can use that. The second one is FAR uh, PHP Archive. Uh, you can download the package from a GitLib, uh, GitHub account and directly uh, include that class in your project and you can use the AWS SDK. The easiest way is, you know, zip. You just download the zip, unzip it in your project folder and start using it. So that's simple. Yeah, these are the, uh, just for a reference, if you are using different techniques, how you will uh, include that S3 object or AWS object in your class to use. So using Composer, you have to uh, in require your autoload uh, class. And if you are using FAR, AWS FAR, you have to include in your project. Using the JIP, uh, in JIP there is, uh, it comes with AWS autoloader, which uh, you have to load. And after that, you can utilize the services of S3, EC2, uh, SCS, many other services you can directly use. Yeah, so moving forward, uh, as I uh, talk, uh, we will talk about S3. So S3 is a simple storage service and uh, it will enable you to really scalable. So S3 is a only a file system service. So it only provides you to store the files. There is actually no server running and access is only using the APIs, REST or uh, SOAP API is available you can only access using those and it is truly unlimited you can store unlimited amount of files in that from 1 byte to 5 gigabyte and there is no limit in the bucket you can really fill this and all objects are stored in a bucket in S3 there is a bucket, bucket is a container where you can store your files and each account, uh, AWS account has a limit of 100 buckets and this is the format of bucket and uh, if you are bucket name in my bucket then it automatically have a url mybucket.s3.amazonaws.com and slash is a path of file under that so if your file is myfile.txt this will be the path to directly access that object using http yeah though uh, I would like to uh, uh, introduce S3 string wrapper. You may be familiar with this. This is the easiest way you can use S3 without going into deep of SDK. SDK also provide you way to store the files, delete the file, retrieve the files, but uh, they are also providing a string wrapper. In that, you can directly use the PHP core methods, the similar kind of methods which you already aware and uh, the underlying architecture will uh, take care of all the things. So you can directly use f open copy rename commands and uh, to use the s3 stream wrapper you have to include your s3 client and then register your stream wrapper then a protocol s3 protocol is available to you to perform any operation so if you want to perform any operation on object objects are the file actually here uh, in the s3 terms we call objects is actually files so this will be the path of your files so s3 uh, will be the protocol and you have to define your bucket name and then path to file and this is the path and now you can perform any action on this if you want to delete it just use unlink method let me show you uh, how easy it is used to use s3 simple unlink you know unlink we use to delete a file on uh, our server so instead of our server file use the s3 protocol pass the bucket name and the path and directly it will delete from s3 so that's really easy how uh, we can utilize s3 in our PHP projects. Similar kind file size method you can directly use, file exist you can use, copy, copy is a good command here, copy you can copy back from one object from one bucket to another bucket or within the same bucket also. So it's really easy, easy as a start point if you are going into uh, AWS and want to use S3 services. So uh, now moving forward, uh, the another service is simple email service. Uh, AWS provides you a simple service. It's reliable and cost effective. You can directly use it uh, 
and uh, you can use it for transactional as, uh, emails and promotional emails also and it support both SMTP it provides SMTP credential directly you can use in your PHP mailer class and start sending emails or either API based from the SDK there is SDK you can directly use those APIs also to send emails also it provides DKIM support uh, so each message will be signed of your DNS record domain uh, record so receiver client email client can understand that it is a legitimate domain the email is valid and uh, edge AWS concept is pay as you go so you have to pay only whatever amount you are using so its cost is very low only 10 cents per thousand email you have to pay and uh, rather there is another uh, cost to send attachment if you are sending attachment the data transfer charges also applies but the good thing is it provides 2000 emails per day free if you are using EC2 service because AWS prom, uh, promise you can use any single service also or the different kind of services. So if you are hosting your application on another server like on your dedicated server, you can still use ICS. But if you are using EC2, then they are promoting uh, to give some free emails on the per day. Now uh, the problem when you are scale in a SCS. They, they provide SMTP service, they provide API service to send emails. And if you are using directly SMTP service, that is slow. Because you know the SMTP that make the connection firstly and then send the email, then disconnect the connection. And when in the PHP script you are sending the email, it actually wait the response from the ACS endpoint that email is sent or not. So uh, the major problem is uh, you can see. The SCS service is only available only in three regions, North Virginia, Ireland, or Oregon. And we are in Singapore. We prefer to host our website in Singapore region. So if we are hosting our website Singapore region, our EC2 is running in Singapore region, and SCS is in North Virginia. So the latency will be much high. And in that sense, it can take 1.5 to 2 seconds to get the response. And that is enough. And that is more. So in that case, your application will be slow. So this can be a one point if you are using SCS and your application is slow, you just have to wait to continue on the script execution. So this is the problem. Now uh, what we can do in this, so this is the solution. First solution uh, you can use is still SMTP, but reuse the SMTP connection. Like if you are sending 100 emails in a script, you can use the same SMTP connection or you can use to create few parallel connection of SMTP to send the emails. So this is the optimized way of that. But still, if you are sending one email only in one script, then it is taking time. So the other alternative, what you can use? So I'm explaining one alternative here. You can use SMTP relay. So what in that you need? You, you are hosting your uh, web server on EC2. So EC2 yours, IAS, Infrastructure as a Service, is AWS concept. So it is providing you a virtual machine. So whatever you can install. So you have to install SendMail email package there firstly and send emails through the SendMail. But configure the SendMail so it's, it can internally use SMTP. That is SES SMTP. So if you know if from the server if you are sending email it is very fast. Or if it is using local mail relay so when in the PHP execution when you are sending the email the pointer it returns immediately and continue the execution yeah in this we cannot guarantee that email will be delivered or not but send mail will retry it so there will be uh, less likely that it will not deliver it will be delivered so this is the one solution you can use so for that there is a prerequisite that you send mail must be installed and in the couple of commands you can install that on the linux and uh, another is you have to verify your form email address because SES is a service to send emails. It do not host emails. So if you are need to host email, you have to purchase email service. From anywhere you can purchase that. And uh, assigned elastic IP, your EC2 must be assigned elastic IP to send an email. Otherwise it will not be sent. And uh, you are uh, requested for the production access because if you are in still sandbox, you can send email only on the fixed number of white label emails which you verified. 
And last one, uh, you have to generate SMTP credential. It's, it's very easy. Just go to SCS console and download your SMTP credential. So host name is fixed in all the three regions. Different uh, uh, host name for three regions, and uh, you can just create SMTP. It will give you username and password, and just use that to send your email in the PHP mailer. So, but here we have. Uh, what I am suggesting is you can configure send mail. So you have to just follow the steps with AWS. AWS wrote a uh, good guideline in the developer guide. You can directly find there because in the 30 minutes that cannot be covered. Uh, there is a series of steps around 20 some Linux commands and that actually what doing is they are changing send mail configuration to send email internally using ACS SMTP. So from your PHP script you send email they go to local mail server and then it is delivering slowly slowly whatever the speed it depend upon package and send mail configuration if it is using multiple SMTP connection not using it is using uh, same connection that depend upon the send mail package configuration so if uh, you installed send mail uh, and uh, you configured it to use SES you can test it just uh, there is a command send mail from email address to email address and it can send directly an email a blank email and uh, how you identify this sent or not using SES SMTP or the general send mail package so here is uh, it is a gmail snapshot it comes with why uh, imagine ses.com if it is there it means it is delivered using SES service not the core send mail package and other way around uh, how you can use it you can use SDK service that is HTTP API you can use to send email that is fast here I am writing some statistics which I uh, measure if you are using directly SMTP in PHP Miller it's taking around 1.5 to 2 seconds because multiple round trips uh, from Singapore to North Virginia is doing so the latency uh, comes in there and it takes time using direct SES API almost 1 second 0.8 to 1 second it is taking because it is uh, allowing you to continue the script execution and in the callback method you can get receive your uh, response if it is delivered or not while using local mail relay it's negligible only 0.10 seconds it is taking to send one email and uh, the, your script execution continue and uh, internally the send mail package is sending using the SES API So these two services we covered here and uh, now uh, I would like to uh, demo a application on AWS cloud how we can host it and how it the, uh, there are features to truly scalable. So let's see a quick demo. So here uh, I, I told uh, there is many deployment services. You can deploy your uh, PHP application directly on EC2 instance or you can use Elastic Bin stock. There are many services. Here you can see Elastic Bin stock, cloud formation, there are more, uh, main uh, deployment services which you can use to deploy your PHP application. So I am picking one, Elastic Bin stock. So let's see. Here it is Elastic Bin stock. Uh, I am just I just created an application PHP Meetup demo app, and uh, here you have to start an environment of your servers. So just create uh, one environment here. So here the two options are there: web server environment or worker environment. Worker environment you need when the application is running on different server, and you are creating a job, a batches of job, and just you are sending those job in the SQS simple queue service and from worker environment just doing work on the jobs picking the job from queue and just processing the request and giving the output so we need a web server really so first we are create, uh, selecting uh, it's uh, something problem here let me refresh oh sorry I do not maintain it <laughs> I'm in need. Yeah. Sorry. 
Which one? Below guest. Let's see a quick demo how, how we can deploy a PHP application and make it truly scalable. So create web server here and uh, as we are deploying PHP application it is providing default configuration for uh, so many languages. So I am picking PHP and environment variable is a single instance if you are uh, uh, you need only one instance then it is not scalable and uh, so to scalable you can use load balancing here. So it will start a load balancer. To, uh, Next we will see here, so first is application version, you have to upload your application zip here that directly uh, the Elastic Stock extract on the server www folder and it will be accessible using the URL. So let's select, uh, so I created one page app here, so I am selecting that, okay and uh, here the base size deployment limits. Uh, when you uh, deploy another version of the same application, you can choose uh, how you want to deploy because if you need really less downtime, then you can choose like fixed instance I generally choose here. So one instance will be replaced by the new application version in one time. When it will be running again, then it choose a second server to deploy your application version. So you can uh, uh, decide the setting here. Next, uh, you have to give an environment name here, whatever you can give. So, I am just giving it name and you can check the availability of this name. It's available and a description you can write here. So, moving next. Here, uh, the two options RDS if you want to create, uh, but I do not su uh, suggest to create RDS here as a part of Beanstalk application because when Beanstalk will terminate, your RDS will also destroy. So keep it outside, just start RDS uh, directly as you normally do from console and use that uh, data and uh, feel free, uh, you keep it EC2 server free from RDS, so no dependency, you can use directly there. The another thing is you can use VPC, it is a virtual private cloud, in the public cloud it can provide you service as a private cloud which your local application can connect using a secure tunnel. So, but we are not using that. So, next uh, there's a couple of types micro instance we are choosing, and EC2 key pair. It is on. Uh, uh, it provides you PM file, and that is the only way to access your server using FTP or putty. If you do not have EC2 key pair, you cannot access your server directly. So, I'm just selecting one key pair here, so and email it. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So here are other settings, you can check those settings and uh, that is the configuration of how your application will behave. So these are not so important, so I am just uh, going forward and uh, pressing and you can give a name here to identify your EC2 instance and instance profile and the service role is the uh, two IAM roles and these IAM roles will actually have access to your deployed services so using these IAM roles you have to give permission to these IAM roles which I am selecting here and then it will work so I am just selecting I just created it service role and this is a summary and you can directly launch it so this way uh, your application will uh, deploy the firstly the zip will be uploaded to S3 and uh, there from there it will extract to your server and it will start so it just take two minutes and uh, once it deployed you can see your application on this url it's currently deploying okay so now uh, i am just showing you the scalability of this so here is the scalability here you can decide the number of web servers 
the minimum servers are one at a time running and maximum are four. So this I am setting. So this setting will trigger a new server when uh, you will set some <coughs> configuration here. This is the scheduling <coughs> trigger which you use. I generally use CPU utilization. So CPU utilization, uh, the every CPU utilization in percentage, uh, I am uh, setting here five minutes. So every five minutes it will check the CPU utilization. And what it will do? If it is going upper threshold, I, I set it generally 70%, and lower threshold, I set it 30%. And upper bridge scale the increment is 1, and lower is minus 1. So when your server will be at 70% usage for 5 minutes, it will start another server, keeping the limit 4. So if you are getting more customers, more visitors, it will start another web server. And the web server, the, there is a load balancer. That is, uh, the, your, your traffic goes to load balancer, and load balancer decides which server is free and route the traffic to there. That way, it makes a truly scalable app. So this is the uh, basic of uh, how you can deploy Elastic Beanstalk application. Same way, you can use cloud formation also. That there is a JSON template based system. So I'm hoping uh, it is just it is a big topic. So I just covered a few points here. Hope it will help you. Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions for him? Maybe one, one or two questions, if possible. Yeah. Yes. Is there any way to scale up the database as the number of machines go? Yeah, you can write. Uh, but you can create read replica of RDS. RDS provide a feature, read replica. Right. And in that, you can start another server, RDS instance. Same kind of visitor instance. And there, it create a replica. And uh, the row. the read replica, but how do you connect it with the, with the scaling from here? Here, I, I asked earlier that I am not connecting RDS here directly. I didn't start at RDS. I am having loosely coupled RDS. So you have different control of RDS. You can connect it with any server. If I bind it with Elastic Ministock, then when I will destroy the environment, or somehow my environment will destroy, the RDS will also destroy. And I do not want that. So I am managing those differently. No, I understand that. But I am saying as the number of instances go up, yeah. the number of connections to the RDS goes up, yeah. Eventually, the RDS hits 90% CPU. Yeah. Then your system will still come down. Yeah. So that's point. You can you can create start the read replicas of the servers, database server. I think the question so, is, can you automate that? Yeah. Can in RDS, there is setting. It's auto scaling. Yeah, auto scaling in the database also. There you can set also if the CPU utilization on RDS instance is going high, you start another read replica. So same scalability is there also. <coughs> Any other question? Yes. It is a PHP application we deployed, so it is starting a server. Here you can see directly, uh, this is Beanstalk service, and if you go to services and uh, EC2, you can see it started a server, real server here. The one running instance is coming here. So this is just started. And it's a normal server, Linux server. You can directly say <coughs> using FTP or PuTTY. So instead of, web server. So it's kind of, uh, instead of doing it manually, this yeah. thing kind of does it for you. Basically, it automatically spins up instances, installs the software, and then you... Then you Low level deployment, it yeah. is handling. Uh, I know that EC2 supports a Windows server. Yeah, Windows, Linux, you can... So uh, if, if we need to have a native Windows application running together with a web uh, application, how? Yeah, if you want to uh, uh, use another server like Windows Server, so uh, you have to create AMI of that server. So you, you, if you know the AMI ID, every server which is running have an AMI ID. AMI ID is the image of Linux or any operating system. So in the uh, in the Elastic Windows, there is a configuration where you can change the AMI ID and just start it. So it will restart, destroy all the old instances, and create another instance with the new. That AMI, so that can be Windows, that can be Linux, Red Hat, Ubuntu, anything. And we can load our Windows application to run together with our web application. Yes, yes. Is there a way to do that? Yeah, uh, you can do. We can take this offline. I think there's a possibility. You can just spin up two different web servers or something. Probably mm -hmm. it's possible. But yeah, you can take this offline for implementation details about this. Yeah. Right. right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you.